Hey guys, it's Colleen from the Good Wife's Guide to True Crime and Murder by Design. Uh, today I uh, am here to give you my true crime tidbit for, um, and I'm going to be talking about two recent cases. Um, and if I pronounce names wrong, I apologize in advance. Um, so the first case is being Farheem Saleh or Sala. Again, I apologize if the name pronunciation is not great. Um, and then I'm also going to be talking about the breaking case of baby boy Micah, who was killed by his parents in Texas. So first up is Farheem. And he was discovered dead on July 14th when his cousin went to check on him at his $2.25 million condo in a luxury building on East Houston Street in the Lower East Side. Um, from what I'm told, it was a very, very nice building. Um, and his cousin said that she went to check on him because she hadn't heard from him in about a day, um, and that was unusual. And when the cousin got to the apartment, she discovered a horrifying scene. Uh, Fahim's head and limbs had been removed, and parts of his body had been placed in plastic bags designed for construction debris. Very, very uh, similar to what we saw in um, the can Canadian case of Luca Magnata, kind of that cut and put in bags. Um, an electric saw was actually plugged in still nearby. Uh, and investigators had concluded that he had been killed the day before. And the suspect and the victim were actually shown together riding in an elevator of the building on July 13th, so the day before they found the body. Uh, the assailant was dressed in a black three-piece suit, wore a black mask, and latex gloves. And he was also carrying a duffel bag. The two men left the elevator, and which opened directly into the seventh floor unit of the victim. So very, very nice. Just goes right into his apartment. Uh, and then the assailant fired a taser into his back, immobilizing him at about 1.45 p.m. that Monday. Uh, he then stabbed uh, the victim to death, wounding him multiple times in his neck and torso. Uh, the next morning, the assailant used a credit card to hire a car to go to Home Depot to buy an electric saw and cleaning supplies. Using the whole money trail thing, not smart, mm -mm, not smart. Uh, the criminal complained so that he was captured on video by a store camera buying the goods about 9.30 a.m. And later that day, dressed in a gray hooded sweatshirt, per the camera footage, the assailant returned to the apartment to dismember the body and clean up the crime scene. The security video, again, inside that elevator showed the suspect using a portable vacuum cleaner perhaps in an effort to remove residue that was left behind when the taser was fired or any, you know, hair or evidence, but you're on camera. You're using a credit card. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, but while this assailant was cutting up the body, the cousin had actually buzzed the apartment and spooked uh, the assailant. And before she had gotten upstairs, the attacker fled through the back door and down a stairwell. So that's why the electric saw was still plugged in, because literally she caught him in the act of uh, dismembering him. Um, and so people initially thought this was a professional hit job because the victim um, is an international businessman um, and thought potentially this was related to them, maybe financial issues. Um, so they thought it was going to be professional. Well... However, instead of leading detectives towards the victim's overseas business projects, the evidence quickly pointed to somebody much closer to home, his one-time personal assistant. The former assistant, Tyrese Devin Haspel, who was only 21, was arrested and charged with uh, murdering Fahim, who was 33. Some investigators theorized that the suspect had tried to make the killing look like a professional assassination to divert attention from himself. But even one of the investigators said that he made several rookie mistakes, including buying the taser online with his own credit card and signing for the package when it arrived in June. So he was planning this out for over a month and leaving a horrible, horrible money trail. 
Um, so stupid. Um, the superintendent of uh, the Crosby Street apartment said the police told him that Mr. Haspel had used one of Mr. Soleil's credit cards to buy balloons to celebrate the birthday of the woman he was staying, staying with. So he used Fahim's credit card to buy balloons for his girl roommate. Uh, and on Friday, that Friday afternoon, um, the superintendent said that the balloons were still in the apartment. So just he's leaving evidence all over the place. Uh, and even the superintendent said, how stupid can you be? Seriously, this is some of the rookiest bonehead moves. Like you try to make it look like a professional assassination and you're making the rookie mistakes. Um, so Ms. Haspel was uh, Farheem's executive assistant and handles his finances and uh, other personal matters. Um, and it's also believed that he owed the victim a significant amount of money. Uh, Mr. Soleil had discovered that uh, Mr. Haswell had stolen roughly $90,000 from him. And the, because they were friends and he was very generous, um, he only fired him and did not report the th th theft. He even offered to arrange a way for this employee to work off his debt in what amounted to a payment plan. So being insanely generous, I mean, $90,000 is not jump change. It's not, you know, I owe you a 20. It's $90,000. Um, and so, yes, uh, the victim was fairly wealthy, but I don't think even if I was a billionaire, I'd still be okay with somebody stealing $90,000 from me. Um, Mr. Haspel had no previous criminal record, um, but he was charged formally with second degree murder in a criminal court in Manhattan. Judge Jonathan Svetsky ordered him to be held without bail. Uh, his lawyers uh, said their client pleaded not guilty and they're in the early stages of gathering facts in a complex case. I mean, to me, this is one of those like simplest uh, cases. Like he left the biggest trail of evidence ever. Um, saw, taser, camera footage multiple times, signed for the package for the taser, used the victim's credit card to buy balloons for his girlfriend that are still in her his girlfriend's apartment. Uh, I bet that just, I don't think you can get much more, uh, you know, evidence unless you actually caught him on the camera murdering him. But I mean, you're pretty damn close. That's my opinion on that. So the other case I want to talk to you about is pretty upsetting. It's very tragic. Um, and I recently, I just found out about this case within the last uh, 48 hours. And that's why I wanted to bring it up since I talk about, you know, breaking cases over here. So the second case uh, is regarding on August 8th, the sheriff's deputies uh, in Collin County, Texas, were called to check on the welfare of a three-week-old infant. When the sheriff detectives arrived at a couple's home, they were not there. Cell phone records showed that the couple had actually traveled to Dallas. Um, when the police did finally catch up with 42-year-old Ronald Grabowski and 41-year-old Donna Grabowski, they were unable to show the police their child, Micah, and instead initially declined to cooperate with police in their investigation. So very similar to, you know, the Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow case where they can't produce the child. Um, most likely it's because the child is not alive to be produced. Um, so they're not cooperating. Um, and after they didn't cooperate, uh, they were taken into custody on child endangerment charges um, at that time. And according to that arrest warrant, uh, the Grabowskis told numerous lies while detectives questioned them. The couple initially told investigators the child was being watched by a family friend. Um, the investigator said that there was an attempt to deceive us as to what happened and the whereabouts of their child. According to the arrest warrant, the couple actually allegedly tried to get a friend to cover for them what writing in a text message again people just leaving a trail of evidence all over the place this, the text said quote i need you to say your baby is ours quick in quick out they just need to see him end quote uh so telling your friends to 
say, yeah, your baby's our baby, just for a second to the police. Um, so Donna Grabowski, the mom, told detectives that uh, the baby was born at the medical center of McKinney, but the hospital had no record of the mother or any live birth. So there is a little bit of speculation where this baby came from. Did they have a home birth? Did they take it? You know, it's still is a pretty breaking case. We don't know the details of uh, this baby so far. So unable to produce the child, investigators uh, and the sheriff's office obtained a warrant to search their home where they found Micah's body submerged in a bucket of tar in a shed behind the residence. After the arrest, they told investigators um, that about July 29th, they woke up and found the baby dead in their bed. The warrant said the couple had told friends that the infant died of SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome, which is pretty common, especially um, in situations where the baby is sleeping in the bed and probably irresponsibly co-sleeping. Um, if you want a whole lecture on the differences between unsafe sleeping and proper co-sleeping safe, I will give you a dissertation on that, but that's for another day. Um, but also, you know, SIDS does usually occur within those first few weeks of life, but can happen up all the way up to like a year. Um, but obviously we don't know if that's really true or if there was another reason the baby died. Um, investigators then told a local news station that they wrapped the child in a blanket and placed him in the bucket. Um, they then submerged him into this five gallon bucket of tar and put him in a shed behind their house. Um, so I just can't imagine the thought process, you know, if you have a baby or a child who dies accidentally, it's, you know, an accident, you wake up and you find your baby dead, you call 911, you try to get help, even if you know the infant's dead, you know, you just, you try, that's your baby. And to just be like, okay, well, the baby's dead, so let's wrap it in a blanket and put it in a bucket of black tar and keep it in the shed. What is wrong with you? That That's not normal. That's when you know that I, I have high speculation that it was not SIDS. There was some other issue happening. Um, it sort of reminds me of that case. Um, it was like a teenager who was pregnant, and she said that... Um, it was a stillbirth, and then she buried it in the backyard. Um, I actually don't know what happened in the result of that case. I mean, I'll look that up in a little bit. But um, just that, you know, if you give birth at home and a baby is dead, stillbirth, or your baby or your child, doesn't matter how old, if they if you die or you wake up and they are gone, you still call 911 if it's an accident. You know, the police will do an investigation. They'll determine it was an accident, and you you go, you go. Maybe you get, you know, endangering child welfare if you were negligent in a case. But typically when it's an accident and they prove it, it's, you know, not, you know, it's tragic, but you're not put in jail for life. When you hide a body in tar and then lie to investigators, yeah, you're going to go to jail for murder. Um, there was that one case in Florida um, where the daughter um the drowned in a pool um and then the son testified um against the mom in court uh and she got uh put in jail for it and i'm like still torn i do believe it was an accident but there were extenuating circumstances in the house where you know all of the kids toys were like put in a shed in the backyard there was like nothing in their room there was documented evidence of uh, sort of neglect. So like those issues play a role in charging of a criminal. So like if you didn't do anything wrong and it was just purely an accident, most likely you're not going to go to jail. But if there are other reasons that lead investigators to believe it wasn't just an accident or you were negligent in the care or death of somebody, yeah, you're going to be in trouble. But again, if it's an accident, especially SIDS, you call 911. Sorry for that little rant, but it drives me nuts that people just ignore common decency and logic. Um, and I mean, a three-week-old baby, just a three-week-old baby, it's your baby. And you have no emotion and you put it in a bucket of tar. It, it breaks my heart. 
Uh, so Micah's body was recovered and turned over to the Collin County Medical Examiner, um, where they will determine the official cause of death. Uh, the Grabowskis were arrested and charged with abandoning or endangering a child with imminent danger to serious bodily injury, abuse of a corpse without legal authority, and tampering or fabricating physical evidence in it with intent to impair a human corpse, according to their jail records. Uh, Rowland, the dad, is being held on bonds totaling $925,000, and Donna, who is also facing an additional charge for tampering or fabricating physical evidence with the intent to impair, is being on, held on bonds totaling $1,075,000. Authorities say that additional felony charges are expected to be filed in the case once the autopsy report comes back for the baby. Um, however, this is not the first run-in with the law Ronald Grabowski has had. He has had a history of run-ins with the law dating back to 2001, according to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. He was sentenced previously for aggravated sexual assault of a child and he was convicted in 2008 of the sexual assault of the child and aggravated sexual assault of the child. The victims in those cases were 12 and 14. He also has been charged with burglary of habitation, so multiple burglaries, uh, and possession of controlled substance. Court records show that for those sexual assault charges, he was sentenced to two years in prison. Again, I will give a whole dissertation why that is totally inadequate I mean, sexual and aggravated sexual assault of a 12 and 14 year old and you get two years, absolutely the F no. Um, and so he was released from prison in May, 2009. In June, 2010, he was arrested by the police for failing to register as a sex offender. And two months later, after he registered to an address in Garland, Texas, the police went to verify his address and found that the house had been vacant. So he gave them a fake address. <laughs> I so this I'll continue to update you guys on this case because the investigation is obviously still in process. Um, but I don't think this is gonna go well for them. Clearly, they've already been lying multiple times. He's already been charged with sexual assault of a child, and this so those charges lead me to question where the hell they got this baby. Like they're in their forties. Typically, that's difficult for, you know, a woman to conceive. I don't know if she's had other children before, but there's no record of a live birth at that hospital, she claimed. Um, so I'm going to be looking extensively in, when any information comes out. I'm wondering if they took this baby. I don't know. And I, I'm not, I don't know. That is just my speculation at this point. But it leads me to wonder where they got that baby. But so... You want to keep tuning into our social media pages daily because we're coming out with our short clips of quick updates, uh, including our five at four, our my this day and true crime daily. And so you want to tune in every day for my true crime, uh, this day and true crime every day at 5 p.m. Central time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I also want to remind everybody that I have my historical podcast monthly episodes in our Patreon and our website membership. Uh, last month, I covered Leonard Lake and Charles Ng, and this month, I'm covering Albert Fish. Um, these are the cases that are too disturbing to uh, discuss over on our Murder by Design or even on our general Good Wives Guide to True Crime podcast. So let me know what you think about me covering that case, or if there are other cases that you want me to cover or you're interested in. Um, and then we also do our weekly live broadcast on Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, so every day we're coming up with new things for you guys. So keep paying attention and I will see you all tonight.